tricks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? No, I don't like that one. All right. Uh, who let the owls out? Hoot, hoot, hoot. No, that one was terrible. Okay, uh, let's see. What do scientist owls use in their laboratory? Uh, that one's, I don't know, what? Beakers. <laughs> oh. Okay, uh, why are owls, why do owls make such good scientists? I don't know, cause they're talented. <laughs> oh. Uh, thank you for coming to my puppet show. It's a hobby. Back, back to the science. Today's science experiment is a little odd. Some might even say that it sways into the realm of gross. But not I, because science and knowledge can be found in all things. So, a good mad scientist must be able to roll up their sleeves and get their hands dirty from time to time. Which is exactly what this experiment calls for. However, I do highly recommend wearing gloves. Our scientific mind and observing eye will be focused on owls today, which are fascinating birds with all sorts of fun facts. Did you know an owl's ears are located under the feathers and many species have asymmetrical ears, which means they're located at different heights on the owl's head. Their ears are also able to pinpoint the location of sounds in multiple dimensions, making them extremely good hunters. Owls have tube-shaped eyes that can't actually move, but provide binocular-like vision and superior depth perception. To compensate for their weird immobile eyes, owls are able to rotate their necks 270 degrees around, which can sometimes look like their heads are on backwards. The tiniest owl in the world is the elf owl, which is five to six inches tall, about the size of a soda can, and only weighs about one and a half ounces. The largest owl in the world is the blackest and fish owl, which has an average wingspan of six and a half feet. That's larger than me. Not all owls hoot. Barn owls make hiss and grunt and shriek noises, while the eastern screech owl whinnies like a horse. <laughs> One of the more interesting facts about owls are how they eat. Owls swallow their prey whole, skin, bones, and all. And during the process of digestion, the soft parts of their prey are dissolved and passed into the intestine for absorption. The hard, non-digestible parts, bones, teeth, fur, feathers, and insects are compressed in the gizzard and then expelled through the mouth. What comes out is called an owl pellet. Hello children, it is I, Professor Stephen Bonaparte, bringing you the Owl Pellet Program by Laboratory Assistants Tregan and Jamel. Enjoy! Hello everyone, I'm Jamel Farley and this is my son Tregan Middlebrooks. Tell them hey Trey. Hey. We are here to show you um, what we're going to find in owl an owl and what they eat and the food chain. What is in? What is the owl about? Um, you will find a package. It shows that there is an allergen alert. This bag contains animal dander and fur. So there it is a warning. In the package you will find instructions step by step about the food chain and what it is about the owl. In your package, you also find the allergen notice. So, if you are allergic to any pet hair or dander, please be advised. Okay, so we have 
Of course, you need to wear gloves, which were in the packet, but we've already uh, put them on. A full wrap owl pellet, the magic. How, um, you just, and to be on the safe side, this ball of um, owl stuff has already been sanitized and sterilized for safety precautions. So, man, so parents, teachers, don't worry about it. It is safe to handle. Your plastic tweezers. A small wooden toothpick and one bone in ID chart and food web. So you'll have all that. The bones and stuff is on the back side. So let's discover what's in now. Okay, Trey. What? Step one. Put the plastic gloves on. Check. We got them on. Um, and unwrap the foil. And j just to be keep things clean, get you a paper, a uh, paper towel or some kind of sheet of paper, so we can go through. And you see he has unwrapped the foil and you have the specimen laying on the paper. Inside you will find a real pellet with a common barn owl. Owl pellets are the undigested remains of prey eaten by an owl. Non-digestible parts like bones, teeth, fur, and feathers can be found in the pellet. Step two, Trey, let's get using our hands and our fingers. You want to gently break it. Break it up. Use your hands, you got gloves on. So, Tragen has opened and cracked open the um, owl content. On this step three, he's going to use his toothpick and pick through um, and explore what's in the clumps. And you got to understand, use your tweezers because the owl specimen is very hard and you just kind of have to break it up like that. Okay? Hold it, Trey. Here, you pick through it. Pick through it with the toothpick. Here to, to join us is our uh, program outreach coordinator for the Lincoln County Library uh, System, Mr. Phillip. And he's going to help us identify what we're seeing. Yeah. Let's discover what we're seeing. Come on, Trey. So, yeah, let's break it up just a little bit. Get our fingers in there. We're going to gently kind of pull it apart. Here, yeah, pull it apart, Trey. And so what you're seeing right here, guys, look at the bones. Is you've got the bones in there, and what you see is the fur compacted mm -hmm. in the gizzard. And so what we're looking for now is what are what are we finding? Well, we see a lot of long bones. And the long bones are your arm bones, your leg bones, and so they stick out pretty well. I see a couple right here. And so then you got your owl identification chart. So let's see what we're looking at. I think more than likely we're going to be looking in rodents right here, meaning that we're that we're that the owl's probably eating some mice. So do you see any bones around here that look like that? What that look like, Trey? What's, what's I that? think that is. There's the feet. Is that a feet or actually that's a jaw? That's called the mandible. Okay. So that's actually this piece right here. So that's part of the rodent's mouth. Mm -hmm. That's his bottom jaw right I here. I did that at school. Okay. Yeah, okay. So let's open it up and see what else we can find. See how many different animals we can find in there. Uh, so let's see. Let's get in this big old china. That might be a skull right here. Just by how you can tell it's kind of rounded. Let's see what's in there. You'll be able to tell it's a skull. Sometimes the skull itself kind of smashes a little bit. But you will definitely find the teeth and the eye socket and in this you see a lot of fur you yeah. see a lot of fur leg. you find another leg and folks at home when you're doing this let me just show you what you will see these are the structures of, of the animals and their bone structures that you might find in the owl sediments other birds regurgitate pellets besides owls like hawks eagles falcons, and even robins. The common barn owl feeds in early morning and early evening and will usually produce one to two pellets a day. These pellets can provide valuable information pertaining to the diet of owls. By studying the contents of owl pellets, you can discover seasonal, regional, and even 
habit differences between the owls. Pellets can be used to illustrate the nature of food chains and the role of birds of prey within the ecosystem. Birds of prey, or raptors, are birds that largely hunt other smaller animals for food. What else did we find? Let's look. A leg. A leg. Let, let me see. Okay. Another, uh, some more bones that you'll find a lot of are going to be the rib bones. Now, they're going to be these little tiny ones in here. Uh, that's probably a rib right there. <laughs> I see another nice little leg bone right there. Is that the one that you found earlier? Yeah. You can actually see the ball and socket, or the ball for the ball and socket joint. There's another Oh, look at that. Now that's a nice... That's the gold mine right yeah. there. Oh, there's a skull. Oh, Trey. look at that. We found a skull. Let's see what it is. Yeah, let's see what kind of animal. That it's actually, I don't know part. if that's a mouse or not. I think that looks like a, a little, bird. Yeah, you might have something a little bigger. That's a bird. Is it a bird? Yep. No, no, no. There's his front teeth. That's it's a nice. How hey, you know? Oh, that's 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 that is a mice. And you got to remember, these barn owls live. These barn owls lived in Wisconsin. They live in the barns in the grain silos of the Midwest, and they take care well, of it's all like the rodents. Yeah, you're going to find multiple skulls in some of these because depending on what that, if the owl was hungry or how many days it's been. Oh, that's another skull, all yeah. right. That the teeth break apart. But I just found the skull. You see that the skull itself doesn't really make it very well. It's usually the front parts of the mouse that make it. The skull is very thin on a mouse skull. Oh, no, it didn't. So it doesn't make it through the but digestive process very well. Let me see. That is a... That is the front end of him again. So that's a mouse. That is another skull. What? That's his top teeth. It looks like these owls love mice. Oh, yeah. Well, they live in the corn bins out in the Midwest, and so there's mice everywhere. A leg. Got a leg. Always. Now, the hardest bones to find in these are what's called the vertebrae, which are these round bones. That's the backbone, of course, just like we have. And then also well, you might, I might, the this, phalanges, or this the might toe be bones. Fit. Okay, that is teeth. We found some teeth. Yep, that's going to be the back teeth of the rodent that when he brings his food in, that's his grinding teeth. Oh, he's got another skull in there, yep. so that's going to be number three. Yep. You can see that one's much smaller than the, some of the other ones. It looks like a baby mouse. Yeah, it's probably an immature mouse, but it could be a mole. Let's see. Mole here, Trey. See you in here. We have a lot of uh, leg bones, uh, arm bones. Um, them are them, in there. Them are most visible to the eye. But when you go through this stuff, you 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 have to decipher through the fur to see them are probably here some vertebrae. Yep. So you found his back. Where? Right here. Yeah, they're those little round bones. They look like little uh, pebbles almost. Who said you have to go through the desert just to find fossils? <laughs> we can find fossils anywhere. As birds of prey, owls are part of a necessary process in the ecosystem called the food chain. The term food chain describes the order in which living things depend on each other for food, or how they are linked together by what they eat. Most food chains start with organisms that make their own food, such as plants. They get their energy from the sun, so we call them producers. Organisms that eat and get their energy from other living things are known as consumers. For example, a mouse that feeds on plants is called a primary consumer. An owl that eats the mouse and other primary consumers is called a secondary consumer. Decomposers are often 
the final link in a food chain. Decomposers are bacteria and other organisms that cause decay. When plants and animals die, decomposers break down their tissues. This adds nutrients and energy to the soil so that new plants may grow. Then the food chain begins all over again. You know, like I said, this process, there's steps to it, but you'll discover so many bones once you start moving and grinding and moving away the debris. Um, and I can see this is a mess. It is a mess, but look what you can find. You can find out what their last meal was. What a role do owls play in our ecosystem? Um, just like any any ecosystem, um, there's it's called the circle of life. Um, but migrating. and also through migrating and stuff, but. Uh, Owls prey on a lot of things. Voles that eat mostly grass. Um, they also eat mice. And what do mice eat? Mostly berries, nuts, seeds from trees, shrubs, and plants. So they're getting a little bit of um, tree nuts and seeds in their system. Shrews are small predators that eat worms, beetles, and insects, which eat dead leaves and plants. So then rats often eat grain from farmers' barns, and this is where the owls that we found, um, in what state? Uh, these are coming from Wisconsin. Wisconsin, and they are often found in barns, near barns, because you know, in barns, that's where you find a lot of rats. All living things need energy to function and to be able to do things. This is the ability to do work. And without plants, the food chain would never get started. Plants are able to capture some of the sun's light energy. The sun releases incredible amounts of energy, enough to power a death ray. But plants use the sun and soil to grow and live, so they don't need to eat other things. For our owl pellets, energy passed from the sun to a plant, to a mouse, to a shrew, or even a rat, and finally to our owl. What's the coolest thing you found, Trey? Mm. What, what what's something you like you discovered you found in here? A skull. And what else? Food. And you we've got to understand that um what's in there? This is how living things work. The sun gives off energy that grows the grass. The grass mm. is there to give off energy for little small animals and mammals to eat. Then eating the small, the owl gets energy from the small animals um, because of, that's part of their digestive and what they are attracted to. Um, and it's all about survival. You know, the sun is needed for survival. The rain is needed for survival. Rats, any anything that is made is needed for survival. It's made for we too, eating. we too consume things. We consume hamburger, chicken, fish, um, vegetables, fruits, um, all different types of foods that you eat in your home. We use that for survival and for energy to keep us going each and every day. Without it, um, we'll be frivoled away. So. We need, this It's all about consuming energy within the body. Once energy goes in, energy also goes out. Through walking, through talking, through all of our daily movements. Like I said, this is part of the ecosystem and it's part of the, um, how the owls, um, how they live and you can kind of tell where they live based on by what they eat. All animals need to eat to get energy to live. And many animals eat plants for that energy, whether it is seeds, berries, grains, or even leaves. Some animals even eat other animals to get their energy. All animals need energy in the form of food to keep the body working and to supply nutrients, whether that be plants or other animals. Nutrients are the building blocks that the body needs to grow 
and repair itself. Plants get it from the soil. Animals get it from plants or other animals that eat plants. Then, eventually, those nutrients go back into the soil when they die. Trey, we're gonna dispose of this the right way. Mm -hmm. Always have a trash can nearby. Oh, he's you take it, else. and once we're done, you take it. You take your specimens, you fold it up as is, put everything in, even your tweezers. Wrap it up. That's a vertebrae. Put it back in the bag. Put it back in the bag that you received the content in. Zip it up. Throw it, dispose it in the trash can, and then make sure that you wipe and sanitize your area. And don't forget to take your gloves off as is. You always go it, fold it, fold it, throw it away, and wash your hands. Always disinfect and wash your hands. All right? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, boys and girls. It was nice having fun to knowing about the ecosystem and about how owls play a part in it. Thank you, my lovely assistant. We'll be back with you soon. Thank you. While our owl pellets may seem gross to some folks, for the seeker of knowledge and the scientist at heart, we can learn very much about owls and the world around them. Sometimes all it takes to be a scientist is the willingness to get your hands a little dirty and being open to learn about the world in some of the stranger places and things. Science is everywhere and in everything.